All right, Garrett Johnson here with Will Zalatoris. And Will, you had a big break there with that injury. And, and w was there anything in particular that you learned about yourself all that time, that downtime, kind of away from the thing you love most, the sport? Any things you learned from yourself? Yeah, I think it was a lot of gratitude, um, you know, when you get your favorite thing taken away from you for eight months. Um, but, you know, really the eight months was actually kind of fun. Um, you know, we did some traveling and, uh, you know, got away from it for a little bit. But... Uh, you know, my mind was always on the game and kind of doing some research on some of the changes I need to make in my swing. So, uh, you know, it's actually a time that I can look back on and actually be fond of as opposed to, uh, you know, maybe not something I want to think about. Right. Well, you had mentioned uh, in the past that bucket list items you were able to cross off the list. I mean, give us a sense of some of those things and, and how fun that was. Yeah, we went to Wimbledon, uh, saw Alcaraz play. Uh, it was really fun. Um, you know, we went for like four or five days. And so uh, just being able to just kind of enjoy it. And, uh, you know, Hell of a Wimbledon. Yeah, well, and, uh, you know, when you're 27, 28 and, you know, don't have kids, it's kind of fun to do stuff like that, um, you know, where you can just kind of get up and go. Anything else overseas or any other kind of exact no, locations? We just, yeah, we just uh, we stayed uh, stayed in the states. Besides that, went up to Aspen, did a little hiking. Um, I didn't have anything on my back, obviously, but it was fun to uh, fun to just you know do some you know a couple mile trails and just kind of be out in nature as opposed to being inside and or being in Texas when it was 105. <laughs> oh my God, I don't know how you live there. It's crazy. Uh, you're a NorCal guy, man. You got to get used to that San Francisco. You're, you know, yeah. that, that's more your weather, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, uh, I actually went back to the Bay Area recently for a couple of days after I missed a cut in uh, Honolulu and it was just kind of fun seeing uh, some you know, old faces from uh, Cal Club and uh, hanging out for, for the day. And, um, you know, it's just, it's it's so funny going back because I'm, I'm seeing guys that, are, that have been out there that I've known since I was like three or four years old. So, um, but yeah, no, I, I love the Bay. I mean, I, you know, I'm always tuning into the Giants whenever uh, whenever they're playing. Uh, so, you know, Kruk and Kipe and uh, Dave Fleming have been super good to me. Do you lose any sleep? Last time I talked to you, I think it was St. Andrews 2022, and they were playing a West Coast series, and we were, you and I were hours ahead of, of yeah. the Giants. Like, do you lose any sleep at all following them, or is it a balance? No, I mean, you know, the beauty of it having 162 games is nice, but it's, it's pretty nice when, the, when they're on the East Coast and we're on Central Time, or if I'm over on the West Coast and they're playing somewhere in the Central or the East, so I can maybe go to bed at a decent hour. But, um, you know, I love following those guys. You know, Greg Johnson's been super good to me as well. So, um, you know, it's uh, those guys have been great. And, um, you know, I haven't met Buster, but we've been texting a little bit back and forth through, um, you know, just through mutual friends. So uh, it's a lot of fun, you know, um, feeling a little bit connected to those guys, especially, uh, you know, growing up, I want to be a baseball player and f play for the Giants. And uh, obviously I'm doing it on a another sport, but I still love watching it. Yeah, I mean, my era was growing up watching Will Clark, Kevin Mitchell, Matt Williams. I'm, you know, a little, little bit older than you, but um, yeah, same passion for you uh, that you have. I want to think about like where you're at now and how you look at major championships, how you look at what defines success going forward now that, that you're back to health, you're contending at, at Riviera. Yeah, no, I, I feel great. You know, I, uh, I, I'm not playing uh, as long a driver as I did before, so I'm hitting a little bit shorter, but the speed's back to where it was. Um, you know, I put the broomstick in the bag, which has been really good too. Um, so I'm doing things, honestly, better than I did before just because the, the swing's more efficient now. Um, you know, when you're a top ball striker on tour, you don't really want to change much. Um, but, you know, some of those things obviously led to, to some of my injuries. So... Um, but the beauty of it now is everything's very simple. It's not like I'm I'm trying to do a three-piece move and trying to put it together. It's it's just um, you know making sure that I get myself in the right posture and be as rotational as I can, as opposed to being too vertical, which will put some stress on my back. And how do you end up quantifying uh, you know what you want to accomplish and achievements? Like I know that you know it's not always a linear sport with with how you can get from point A to point B. But how do you kind of define success overall? Yeah, I mean I. I my career and life goal is to win a major. So, um, you know, whenever that comes, uh, I'll take it. But, you know, just getting better each day is, is kind of the motto that Josh Gregory, my coach, and I have really said, you know, no matter where we are, just keep doing what we're doing. And eventually um, the trophies will get in the way. But we've got enough, uh, we have enough silver medals at home that, uh, that are motivating enough to turn those uh, three seconds into hopefully a, a major championship. Do you look back on the silver medals when you see them? Is there any tinge of regret at all, or is it more of a learning experience, or how do you kind of view those now? Yeah, I mean, no regrets at all. I mean, uh, you know, the, the finishing second at the Masters was just such a special week. Um, and, you know, really I was kind of out of it on the back, and then Hideki came back for me to only, only lose by one. 
Um, Water on 15. Yeah, and, yeah, exactly. And then, um, you know, losing in the playoff, you know, uh, Justin played three holes in 200 par. You know, that's 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 going out and getting it and at the right time. And then, uh, you know, Matt played some stellar golf, uh, you know, on the weekend, especially, you know, hit one of the, you know, top shots in major championship history out of that fairway bunker. So, um, no, I mean, I, I don't have any regrets at all. If anything, like I said, I, I knew that I was that close and I'm doing things better now. I'm, I'm not in any pain, which I was kind of battling it for about three, four years. Um, so it's kind of nice to, you know, be able to play golf week in, week out and not have to, uh, not have to feel like I'm slapping band-aids on things. For sure. And your coach, you mentioned Josh Gregory, he mentioned to me that lag putting, your distance control has really gotten good on the greens and uh, of late. What do you chalk that up to and how important is that going forward for these bigger events? Yeah, you know, I've always been a really good lag putter, but there is an adjustment with the broomstick just because it's so different. Um, and I think, you know, when I first started working with them about four years ago, it was very, um, we did a lot of these drills. Um, that really over the last couple of years, I didn't need to do just because my lag putting was, was the kind of the best part of my game, but I struggle with the shorter ones. And now um, I'm doing really good with the shorter ones. And now it's just trying to make sure I'm matching up my line and pace. Um, so really it's it's kind of doing drills that I was doing three years ago. Um, you know, just uh, getting the feels of, you know, being able to look up at a 35 footer and know how hard I need to hit it. It's just kind of that, the, um, the intrinsic feeling, I guess, uh, of just getting that, you know, getting that back, you know, it's like, basketball players you know when they stand over you know Steph shoots a 35 footer he knows how far he needs to you know feel like he's got to you know shoot it and you know you can it's sense same, it yeah. yeah you can sense it and I think it's just getting a little bit of that feel back and that just comes with playing as well um, you know when you've been in, out for eight months it gets a little rusty and then the more I've played the better I've gotten at it Right, and I think about, you know, as we look ahead in the schedule, I mean, the President's Cup, you were there in Charlotte, at least got to taste some of it, although you were injured, weren't able to be on the team. But, I mean, what what kind of hunger and what kind of passion does that give you going forward, knowing it's ahead here on the calendar? Yeah, I mean, any, you know, I, I would love to be a part of those teams for sure. Um, you know, those are things that are cumulative over two years, and I've just, you know, you're going to have your ups and downs through a two-year period. But, um, yeah, I'd, I'd love to be on the team. I've had a taste of it being with the guys and being with them in the team room in Charlotte. Um, you know, when it came to uh, the Ryder Cup this past year, I was out for about eight months, so I didn't really get to, you know, be around the guys as much, you know, not really a part of those group texts. Um, but really, you know, it's just, um, it's a, you know, there's there's something when you're out here playing for yourself, you know, day in, day out, but it's another one you put on the red, white, and blue and play for your country. It's uh, it's a different it's a different type of nerves for sure. Well, you mentioned the Ryder Cup there, seeing it from afar, like on TV. Like what, what, what takeaways do you have and what, what kind of, you know, feeling does that give you when you when you see the way those guys bond? You talk about that group text. Yeah, you know, it's it's it is funny being you know pseudo on the inside and and then seeing when I was gone for that amount of time the stuff that comes out in the public and a lot of it is is not true for sure. Um, you know, these guys, you know, everybody's friends, everybody's there for one common goal. Um, and I think, you know, that's, it's something that, you know, now the part that I love is that these guys, when they're on teams together, they're playing practice rounds together all the time, playing two on two games. Um, you know, and it's fun. And I've, you know, I was a part of a Walker cup and I've got, you know, almost six, I want to say guys that are currently on tour right now that were part of a Walker cup team from 2017. Um, so, you know, we have, we, you reminisce on those memories all the time, but, um, they're bonds that, you know, when you're playing under the gun like that, um, you know, and you're playing together, you're playing for a country, it's, uh, there's nothing like it. Right. And then just kind of closing up the state of the game and, and just where we are with the, the division we have, what, what do you make going forward? Um, you know, what do you kind of hope to see here? I know there's kind of some rocky roads here with yeah. Liv and, and the PIV investment, but what, what do you think? Yeah, you know, I think it's great. We got the SSG deal done and, you know, now we're giving players equity. Um, you know, the real main thing that, that I like about it is, you know, we all obviously want to be PGA Tour members, you know, that are out here. But now um, we're incentivized with our own pocket to make sure that we're putting the best product forward. And, you know, I think the utopian scenario is to have all of us back under one roof. Um, you know, we've got it four times a year when it comes to the majors, but we need to try to get everyone back under one roof. And I don't know what that path is. You know, I, I, I was on the player advisory council for two years and um, I needed a break because <laughs> it was a pretty, pretty rocky two years, obviously, to be on there. 
Um, but you know, we've got some really smart guys and having Tiger as a, as a voice now and being involved with everything is, is really good, but we'll, you know, however we get there, um, you know, like I said, the best thing for golf going forward is to have everyone under one roof. And, mm -hmm. and if it's some sort of, you know, Rory's mentioned a champion league style, um, you know, however many events, whatever that looks like, whatever time of year, but you know, everybody wants us to see to play. Everyone wants to see us play together as much as we can. And, um, you know, hopefully now with, uh, you know, the, the framework agreement, even though people thought it was a merger, was by no means a merger. It, you know, it got us out of litigation, uh, which was bleeding our reserves dry. And, you know, when you're fighting against a $750 billion plus, um, you know, sovereign wealth fund, we're going to lose that battle every time. And so, you know, I think uh, now that things have been kind of become a little bit more, um, I wouldn't say normalized, but we're having relations with PIF and trying to figure out how we can maybe get everyone together at some point because we know that that's the best for the game. And, um, you know, we're not looking at the next three years, we're looking at the next 30 years. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, the division's not going to help us. Um, and so I think everyone's starting to finally feel, um, feel a bit of the same thing. And I know that uh, when the SSG deal got announced, uh, you know, through a couple of friends that are on live that, you know, they even said, you know, look, this is good for the game. Um, this is more money's being put into golf and uh, hopefully, you know, this will benefit you guys as well as us. And, you know, I think the, the real feeling is there's not a lot of animosity when it comes to um, the guys that went. I think it's just more of, uh, you know, coming back to here would be uh, a little bit different. Right, and, and it's complicated. And, and how, you know, how do you kind of picture that? Like, I know we talk about Champions League in different scenarios, but like, is that something that can be done like in in a fair way, or or is it? I mean, your guess is as good as mine. You know, I, I wish I had an answer for it because if I did, I think we would fast track things a little bit quicker than uh, than kind of the way other talks have gone so far over the last year. So. You know, I think uh, the Champions League idea would be probably the best way going forward where we get some variation of the best guys from over there and the best guys of over here. Um, it's just what people want to see. And, uh, you know, making it an international game as well, I think would be a massive help. Um, you know, I think, um, you know, the tour has tried to go international, but I think when you now are adding in uh, different markets that really have been untapped, I think there's a lot of potential going forward. And lastly, uh, with three second place finishes in majors is there a, a type of major or a major that you feel fits you best fits your game the best so far as if it plays as hard as it possibly can it's <laughs> definitely the one that fits me um yeah i've all the ones that i've played well out of typically typically been the ones that have been um really tough conditions um so are they the most enjoyable to play i'm not sure i would say enjoyable would be the right word but um but yeah the the grind is something that i love where you know you if you're you know, U.S. Opens, you're trying to save pars as much as you can and make sure you're not making doubles. You can get away with bogeys, just doubles you can't make. Um, you know, the Masters is always special, and it's just whatever whatever the conditions give you that year um, is basically how that place is going to play. And, um, you know, the PGA is, is probably the most, I'd say, consistent in terms of setup, uh, despite playing different golf courses. Um, you know, you're always going to have a winner somewhere around that 8 to 12 under range, uh, maybe a little bit lower if you've got perfect conditions. Um, and then, you know, when it comes to the Open Championship, it's just whatever the weather gives you. Um, you know, you could play St. Andrews and 20 some under, you know, could be the winner. Or you could play Carnoustie and it could be two over. And so, um, you know, like I said, any of the ones that are hard, I'm, uh, I'm all in on. Great stuff. Well, Zalatoris, good luck the rest of the year out here on tour. Thanks, brother. Appreciate it, buddy. Yeah. Thanks, dude.